one year we did have a, a caterpillar that came into the vineyards and it kind of ate the leaves, which is bad because if you don't have the leaves, you don't have the nutrition going into the uh, grapes. But that was like probably 25 years ago and I can't remember what that was even. It was something that just came in and it, and it went away and it didn't make a, a real huge difference on our harvest. So here we are back in Finnegan. Finnegan also has a specialty of being, it's the, it's the only village here in this entire area that's predominantly Protestant. Normally all these villages around here are Catholic. And the people that lived here in the past married within the village. And so a lot of the names that you see here are the same family names. There's going to be a lot of Krugers, a lot of Knebels, Löwenstein. There's certain names that happen time and time again and that's because of their being Protestant here. In earlier times, people didn't marry outside their religion. It just was not anything that anyone did. Oh, no. Another thing that Vinnigan has is they have one of the oldest and longest uh, wine festivals that uh, here in Germany. And every year they have the festival at the end of August, beginning of September. And they take their and the, the people oh, have a little competition like about who can do the, the, mm -hmm. the nicest uh, flower boxes for that year. Uh, Miguel Hall. Yeah. Um, and every year at the end of the wine festival, they do announce who the, the winner was for that year. And here you can see the houses are a little spaced. Where we're going for the wine tasting is going to be a, a lot closer together. There's, a, there's not much space between, it's wall on wall, roof on roof. Out here, it's more of what we know in our you know, normal villages, where the houses are standing free again, and they're having a bit of a yard and fence on each uh, property. Oh, look, there's a, a glider going up. Where we're headed right now, there's a small airport up there. So that's where they've taken off. Another thing that happens when you have a, a very close town like that is some people these people don't need a garden somewhere, but the people in the middle of town didn't have any possibility for a garden. So sometimes they would come outside of town, and you'll find this throughout all of Germany, these little Schreber gardens. Schreber garden is outside the village, and people can do, uh, they can have their hobbies there, like some people will store firewood. This first garden here has their family to have them. Which, which is the bigger honor? To be the wine queen is probably the more respectable one, and to be the wine witch is the more fun having one. And, the, and it is just more for fun. If I were to be uh, in that role, I would want to be the wine witch, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, here I have a nice one. Look, that's an old one, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. It's a nice shape, too. If it has an H at the end, they're, they're under that historic. So they, they can. Uh, <laughs> so when we come onto our, our street here, this is kind of the main street. A lot of streets, a lot of towns like Vinnegan have one or two streets that run the, the, the length of the town, and the other streets are all like ladder runs. And that almost every town that you come across here on the Mosul is going to be like that, but it makes only sense because they go along the, the rivers, and depending on how tight the, the town is, how close okay. it is to the river, and how close the mountain is, depends on how many streets you have. Another thing Vinnegan does is they add these nice old grapevines wow. across the street. It's all for decoration. Some of the vines that cross the street are 100 years old. <coughs> Most of them don't bear any fruit not be so desirable. Mm. They have during the wine fest, they do right here on this little stage area, they do a nice uh, wine play. Well, does every town have their own wine festival? Or? Yep. I can't think of a single village here that doesn't do some kind of a wine fest. And they all run at different times or all at yeah. the same time? No, they have a very traditional schedule there. Like, Vinnegan is always at the end of August, the beginning of September. Coburn is always the first weekend in July. And, and because they know that people can plan for years in advance, they just know that that certain time I'm busy. 
So the winery we're going to visit is up here on the left. You can see it with the, the window shutters. And we'll be getting out of the bus and we'll be going down the street in the first yard that we'll <coughs> come across. That's where we'll go in. And Klaus will come back and pick us up when we come to him. He, he got lost. And everybody was just in a commotion. Mm -hmm. oh. I had one lady who fell like right before the, the ship. And I went with her to the hospital. She ended up breaking her shoulder, oh, oh, no. her cheekbone, <gasps> and her eyebrow. Oh, and she had to stay no. in the hospital for three days before they let her go home. Oh, oh my it was gosh. Awful. And her poor husband, he took a bed in the room and everything. Yeah. Oh. So that was our trip to Vinnegan. Mm. I have a great story to tell you about. Um, there's a. I told you about the wine witch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they have a story here about a, a man who. He loved to play the wooden pipe. He was quite an accomplished pipe player, but he was also a winemaker. And he had his favorite barrel of Ulin wine. You know how good that is now. And but he noticed something very peculiar, that every day, two fingers of wine were missing out of that barrel. And he like, just couldn't figure out what was happening. He asked his colleagues what they thought of the whole situation. They said, oh, it could be the wine which is getting to your wine. He said, I don't believe in witches, that can't be true. So he uh, decided one night to get to the bottom cellar and he locked himself in. And he didn't have to wait too long before he heard a key turning the lock. And he heard the glug, glug, glug of the wine going into the jug and he got up with his big wooden flute and hit the thief over her head. Turned out to be his own dear wife. Oh, <laughs> I think he should have been much more generous with her than he, she would have to sneak around. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that's funny. It was terrible. Now you can see where we're traveling back now. You can see the point where we had the wine, 